to the pit lane here in Berlin. Oh, Saturday. Today is a big day actually because someone is going to drop out this time. Like 18 drivers. So by the end of today, I'm hoping we can cut that down to like 10, 9, at least less than 10 effectively, just so it's easy to have sort of have a story for tomorrow because we don't want to go into tomorrow and still have 18 drivers up for grabs because that means anybody could win it. It might mean, you know, sit back and enjoy a wild ride, but I'm not expecting that. So today is the big day. Who is going to really stamp their authority down in this title fight? I'm really looking forward to it. So, plan for today. Plan for the day is simple. I'll show you around. We didn't really do the pit lane yesterday, so I'll show you the pit lane a bit later on. Uh, we'll show you the back of the paddock as well, and just sort of sort of the area around the Berlin track, and obviously the normal media pen, press conference stuff. Uh, we'll get all of that in. All right, so I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, so while we wait for qualifying to start, I thought I'd come to the back of the garages to the paddock area. Now, it's not really as glamorous as the world of Formula One. Um, there's no motorhomes, there's no like little special places, it's just tents, buildings, blocks of little tiny offices that have been made. It's all very much makeshift in Formula E, it's not permanent, even though that we're here for three days and you think maybe they put a motorhome, and maybe a motorhome makes sense with COVID, right? They all stay on site and so forth, but no, not like that at all. There's there's no motorhome, never have been in Formula E, it's just literally blocks. I'll show you around now so you can actually get an actual look of what it looks like behind the scenes in Formula E. most glamorous paddock in the world it's not like what you see on TV when you, when you look at Formula 1 but as I said it never has been it's all part of the cost saving stuff like they don't need to but they all stay in hotels like I don't know how many years that I've been at races and I've ended up staying in hotels with drivers I remember Rome I think I had Venturi, Nissan, um, Virgin all in the same hotel um, I don't have anyone in my hotel at the moment I'm a bit further out um, and I feel I think Formula Rehab have put teams in specific locations um, in order for them not to cross contaminate but media we had to fend for ourselves and, and get our own and get our own hotels effectively so yeah not the most glamorous but yeah we'll head back to the media center now and, uh, and get ready for qualify and there we have it qualifying is done wow Diaz Tachito came out to play today John Eric Vern on pole Antonio Felix the Costa let's talk about our reigning champion wow out from group one into the super pole puts it second it was a really tight fight the sort of that was like the ST teacher of season six season five where they're just incredibly quick incredibly just better than the rest basically and that's what they proved today currently in the pit lane i'll show you some shots although cars are quite empty so i'm just sort of walking down towards park Ferme because the DS Chip Chip cars are there, the, the, the other cars in the garages as well, but they're all a little bit, they're all like tucked away, waiting to sort of go through the Park Ferme conditions. So we'll head down to Park Ferme, see what we can see, have a look around, and then we'll come back and we'll have a chat in a moment. to the end of the paddock because there's one thing I would have loved to have shown you but I can't show you it is the Formula E fan village because obviously that's an area where or the fan zone whatever it's called it's, a, it's an area where you guys would go and, and visit and spend time while we're in this lull period now between qualifying and the race but it's such a long walk so we're trapped we cannot make to the general public whatsoever at all okay so 
they've cordoned us off, so it's made us have to do a massive long walk from sort of outside all the way round turn one. We have to go, then obviously there's turn one, turn two, and then we come up in the middle just before turn five. There's a little bridge, and I've got all the way back. So I'm not moaning about a walk. I'm, I'm privileged to be here, but it's a long walk. So maybe what I'll do tomorrow to start the start the Sunday vlog as we go into Championship Day is we'll talk about you know the championship and I'll show you that walk and, and so forth and speed it up and then you can see what I'm on about but on this side from when we come in that's where the e-village is and we can't go in so I would love to have shown you all the activities everything that's had to happen because Berlin to be fair even from previous years the e-village here is probably one of the best e-villages across the whole season that I've seen because there's so many activities food they had normally had go-karts like the activities that you could have done in Berlin were huge and I saw them setting up yesterday they were setting up quite late yesterday actually because they put out the table and the chairs and obviously the vendors and stuff were just lots sort of like turning up late evening and obviously leaving it there overnight and probably some of them arrived early this morning as well um, to set up but shame I cannot show you that but I'll sort of show you that long walk um, later today so now I'm walking back basically through the paddock right so where we just met where I was talking to you and it's a lot cooler today like it, the temperatures were supposed to be 28 degrees but and it's warm when the sun comes out but there's a few clouds spotting around you probably see a few there's not many of them it's still a lovely day but it's just cooler, especially when the sun was in. I was just thinking once I just recorded that a little bit, I was like, it's a lot cooler than I thought today. Like, so yesterday I wore a short sleeve shirt and I was like, thank God, because it was boiling. But today I'm in my long sleeve shirt, ready for the post race show, hopefully later today. And I'm like, you know what? It's okay to be wearing a long sleeve shirt. I thought I'd be dying, but I'm not dying in the heat. It's actually a really nice day for what is supposed to be 28 degrees. I don't think we're at 28 degrees yet, to be honest with you. I think maybe in the sun it might get up to 25, 26, maybe 28 at push, but definitely in the shade. It feels like it's a 21, 22, really nice temperature kind of day. Um, it's currently, what is the time? I don't know what the time is, but it's probably about midday, actually, by the time I'm filming this, because we haven't, I haven't had lunch yet. Qualifying was so early, <laughs> 10.45, no, when was qualifying? 9.45, 10 o'clock, too many times um, in my head. So. Yeah, it's, it's still so early in the day. The race is really early, um, two o'clock start. So I don't know why it's a two o'clock start. It's probably one of the earliest Formula E races. And I think tomorrow is similar time as well. But we have a full day tomorrow. Just not like a normal double header when we only have one practice session tomorrow. We have two practice sessions tomorrow. It's like, I don't know why, because double header rule states that on the Sunday we only have one practice session, but today we have, tomorrow we have two, so interesting but anyway i'm gonna stop talking now uh we'll probably reconvene i think now after the race we'll sort of have a have a chat and see who won let's have a quick prediction then who's gonna win i think the cost is gonna win i think there's gonna be team orders at tech cheetah today i think there's gonna be team orders and the costa is Vern is going to allow the costa through or the costa will overtake that I think there's going to be some team orders at Tech Cheetah today and um, they'll allow the Costa through, the Costa wins, gets those points needed for Sunday, don't worry about Group 1, well what's the worry about Group 1 because he made it through from Group 1 uh, into Super Bowl today so then get the points on the board today, do the same tomorrow in the reverse grid layout and, and go from there, that's probably why it's a two session actually, it's the reverse grid layout so it's maybe taken as a different track therefore that makes sense doesn't it, that makes sense, right I'll see you after the race. Wow, what a race. We're outside the DS Tech Cheetah Garage. What on earth happened to them today? One and two, and it just fell away. Tire problems, tire heat, which is interesting because not many people were banking on that being an issue today because they felt like teams had gone over it. But for even with the temperatures not being as high, Tech Cheetah still still struggle with that which is a problem going into tomorrow considering you know they're very happy attacking a fast lap that's what the cost was saying like he can attack go really quick oversteer the car get the lap time he said if we do that for 40 laps we're just going to die and effectively that's what happened today so very disappointing very disappointing for the tech cheater but 
Lucas de Grasse. I just had a feeling. I just had a feeling when he popped up in third that he was going to win. And I, he, he did that. They managed to attack mode perfectly. Attack mode had such a massive importance in this race. I don't think anyone thought attack mode would be as critical as it would. That one use of eight minutes, hats off to the FIA because they're starting to change it a little bit. They did two by eight in London because of how low the energy efficiency was. So obviously to give them more attack and obviously that may, might might make a few people a little bit energy critical but it didn't really work and every, it was pretty much a flat out race but here it actually it, it really changed the complexion of the race because Rene Ras, we saw it he took that attack mode early went up to second but you know brilliant but finished in ninth so it just showed he went a little bit too early you know if he timed it like Mortara, Nato and, and, and Degrassi did then that was the way to get on the podium same with Mitch Evans as well I felt Degrassi took his a little bit too late. I would have gone one lap later to try and then have more of an attack mode to build a gap. But I suppose once you're in front, you're in front. You don't need to build a gap. You just energy save from there. But yeah, great race. Really enjoyed it. The championship is set now. Nick the Freeze. Nick the Freeze didn't score points today. He's still in this. He's still in this. He still leaves the championship. But group one. That's where, unfortunately, unfortunately, as I stop outside the, the Audi garage. The championship's going to be one in qualifying, isn't it? It's whoever can do the best in Group 1 tomorrow. And whoever gets the highest up the border. Because, like, if you qualify 15th, 16th, if Nick DeFries is 15th or 16th tomorrow, he is not going to win this, okay? Absolutely not going to win this. So, you need to do what the Costa did. And the Dennis, the state, Dennis has a real chance, actually, because he was able to do it today. If he can do it tomorrow, get one or two positions higher, hope that the others don't do it, or struggle like Tech Chi just struggled today in the race and get in front of them like he did. Then and he's in pole position as well. So it is gonna come down to group one, unfortunately. It is gonna come down to group one. But that's what we're gonna see. So we'll be back tomorrow for championship day. The day is gonna decide who is the season seven champion and the first ever formerly world champion. I'll see you tomorrow for the finale. Bye.